Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today, maybe, just maybe, this guitar is going to be the one that saves me. We're doing the Noel Gallagher J150 today. So this is an interesting model that, in the very short period of time that this thing has existed, it's created quite the legacy for itself. So first off, who is Noel Gallagher? If you're not familiar, he's an English artist, best known for being the songwriter as well as the co-vocalist and lead guitarist of the hit band Oasis. And if that doesn't ring any bells for you, you know the song Wonderwall. I don't care who you are, you've heard it somewhere. And if not that one, I'm sure you've heard of Champagne Supernova at some point in time too. But Oasis broke up in 2009, so he has his own band now, called Noel Gallagher and his High Flying Birds. And he actually has some kind of interesting songs within that band as well. The one that stuck out to me was Black Star Dancing. It kind of had like a funky groove to it, like at least halfway through that song. But if this video teaches you nothing else, Noel has a massive fan base. Like, it is just <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, let's go ahead and open this thing up before I tell you any more. Beautiful dark, like, burgundy case on this. I'm really digging that. TKL, likely USA-made version, would be my guess. Let's take a look. Whoa, yes. Squeaky, but very cool. Look at that. A very vintage cowboy-esque looking yellow interior. And here we go with the Noel Gallagher J150. So a 150 is very similar to a J200. I mean, we've reviewed a couple of those on the channel. You can check out these reviews and demos, but this is basically, think J200 Studio, except for J200 Studio is actually a completely different model that we'll also talk about a little bit later on today. But it's like a J200 except for you don't have the fancy multi-ply binding on the headstock and you do not have any binding on the neck itself. But you still get some fancy binding right here. You get some mother of pearl in this area, but the J200s get another one right there, but it's still the mustachioed bridge. You get a fancy pick guard, maybe not quite as fancy as the true J200s. I think those ones are gold sometimes. But you still get that beautiful figured back. I think they call it a double A grade wood. Same thing going on for the neck. So it's pretty nice, but I would say this, it's not like a complete gloss finish. It almost has some uh, satin-like attributes to it. Like it's not completely fully buffed up. That feels weird. I was not expecting that. So it's kind of like uh, somewhere in between satin and full gloss. I mean, it still feels glossy, don't get me wrong. It sounds similar to the other J200s that we've had, but almost a little bit more muted. That would be my first impressions here, you know, not sitting down and strumming it with a pick and whatnot. But on top of all this, we do get some fancy case candy for the Noel Gallagher fan out here. So you get a handwritten little by little, well, uh, I don't know if it's actually handwritten. It might just be a photocopy of it, yeah, <laughs> of his song. That's actually a pretty good one too. And then inside here, you get some uh, other fancy stuff. Okay, I guess that's actually a Canadian-made TKL case. They make them both in USA and Canada. So we get our warranty pamphlet right here. Nothing too fancy. But then our COA here actually is like a, a leather-bound booklet. You get a photo of him with his J150. And then the rest of your other COA goodness. But Noel is known for using a J150. It's just his favorite thing. Because if you're wondering why this guy doesn't have the fanciest guitar in the world, it's just what he likes. But this thing, yes, right here. This is what everybody was so excited about. The Adidas sticker. So apparently he put his Adidas sticker like right there. So I think if you were very careful, you might be able to move it there. And then there might be something else in here, but I, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> but it looks like they also give you a uh, humidification system in here. So that's actually very nice. Okay, but now controversy time. So this whole set right here, they made 200 of these 
worldwide, and they only shipped a very few of them overseas, which made a lot of British fans <laughs> upset. The fact that most of these were left in the USA was, you know, kind of a strange decision, but, you know, I kind of understand at the same time. But this set was $4,299 brand new. When I first saw that, I was kind of shocked. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're missing all this binding. I mean, sure, it's a signature guitar. You get all this fancy stuff. But compared to a J200, those were $4,649 brand new. However, you can't really compare this to a J200. It'd actually be a little bit more apropos to compare it to the SJ200 Studio. And those guys are $3,649 brand new. So you're about at a $650 premium in between those. So that's where the artist premium comes in, as well as a, a big difference between those guys is this still has a Gibson Mother of Pearl inlay for the logo as well as the crown instead of just being a silk screen. So just in that alone, I think is worth it for the premium anyways. You also have some mother of pearl on your mustachioed bridge versus not having any as well as, you know, your pick guard's a little bit different. It doesn't have the fancy vines and flowers. So it seemed highly priced, but, you know, semi-what logical at the same time. But then, then the resale market happened. <laughs> I laugh because it just boggles me. All right, let me take you through the sold listings on these things. Now keep in mind, these are not flippers that purchased these to resell them necessarily because you're not seeing a whole bunch of these things show up on the used market. But the first one you can see completed here on Reverb, it was the brand new price. You happen to get lucky you could buy it for the brand new retail price, $4,299. But the next one that got listed was for nine and a half thousand. And that's when I started paying attention to this thing because I was like, what? Nine and a half thousand? That guy is crazy. And he eventually price cut it down to 8,500. But then the next guy to put his up on the used market, he was one about 8,900 bucks, but he got really impatient, slashed his price down to six and a half, and it sold. And it was at that point where I was like, okay, yeah, that, that feels about right. That feels about right. About a $2,000 premium for something that if you were lucky to get it brand new, it made sense. But the next offering was at 85, they slashed it down to 7,000, got it sold. So we were starting to create a market for these things. But then the next two, they hit up at 9,500 and they end up selling. And then the next two are 10 and a half thousand and they end up selling. This guitar, this little, basically a J200 studio is out inflating the Adam Jones signatures. It's already at two and a half times the original value and it's just insane. Noel Gallagher, you have some fans that love you and 200 made apparently was nowhere near enough. Maybe they'll have to do another run of these guys. So that's where the market currently sits. And if you think these things are, you know, waiting weeks and months to sell, they're not. I think it's crazy too. Ten and a half thousand within three days. The last guy didn't even put Noel Gallagher in the title. So I don't know where the pricing of these things is going to stop. So if you happen to have one of these, you know, hold on to it for a couple of years, I think, because the used market is just a little bit insane, especially for what this is. <laughs> But being his own signature here with the Adidas sticker, you know, I, I guess it made it interesting enough for people. I mean, this is like the Buckethead Les Paul. For me, I'm a big Buckethead fan. I'll pay crazy prices, you know, two and a half times brand new. But that was over the course of like 10 years. This thing, it, it has been in the course of a couple of months. It's just people are, I think, finally breaking down. They realize they're no longer going to get a brand new one. But I thought that was an interesting story to share. Your other option is just buy a regular J150. They're out there. They're pretty rare. They've also been going up in value because a lot of people have been wanting them right now because of this thing. But they were made from about 1999 until the mid 2000s, like around 2005. So you can pick one of those up relatively inexpensively as compared to one of these guys. Let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, and then get to a playing demo of Noel Gallagher's signature J150. Inside the Noel Gallagher J150. It's a bit rough, I'm not gonna lie. There's some nicks and dings from the factory and some chips that will go over, but hey, let's take a look at this. 
So first off, our pick guard here. If you remember back to the Bob Dylan J200 that we reviewed, we actually had like fancy mother of pearl dot inlays on this. However, on this, they just use like acrylic plastic. So it's not quite as fancy and it actually sticks up above the surface. So if you're picking, I could see one of those things accidentally falling out one day, but pretty much every single one of those kind of sticks up just a bit. So maybe that's just how they do them and I'm not familiar, but you'd really think that it'd be flush, wouldn't you? And then the other thing with the pick guard is the yellow felt for the case gets stuck up underneath that. Now, if you clean it long enough, it should come off, but it is really stuck like right underneath the glue. That's kind of annoying, but when you have a giant fluffy case, what do you really expect? But moving on to our bridge, it is the two bar mustache bridge. So what they're talking about, two bars. The fancier ones actually have another two up here and they're slightly stylized differently, but we do have a bone saddle on here. And then you can see your bridge pins right here. But then moving inside, isn't this exciting? A battery pack has actually stayed in place for an acoustic guitar. All the time I have to re-glue these things, so that's nice. But inside here, you do have a hand signed by Noel himself sound hole sticker. That also reads J150, has your serial number and his little scribble right there. Apparently that's been making a lot of people happy that they did that. But there is an LR bags pickup system in here. So this is your volume and this is kind of like a tone. It's just like a different mixing blend. Basically all the way this way is like wide open. And then this way it kind of closes it off, makes it darker sounding. And then this is a phase inversion. What that means to me is one of them is a little bit brighter sounding than the other one. I, it's not like quacky out of phase type stuff. But here you can see you're curving along the edges and you have X bracing on this one, which you can see right here with my inspection mirror, as well as the under saddle pickup right there. But as far as our top here, it is a Sitka spruce top. And the way the finish just kind of sinks into the spruce top really kind of makes it look orange peely. I think that's just the way the wood is though, not necessarily on Gibson for the finishing. I guess I could be wrong, but you can definitely see kind of like an orange peel like effect due to it sinking into the grain of the wood. Okay, and now looking it up, they call it a thin finish nitro VOS. That might have something to do with it as well, being a thin finish. And then the VOS is kind of what gives you this light reflection right here. Basically, they take this polishing compound essentially, and it just kind of gunks the guitar up, makes it look a little bit older. And yeah, that's definitely what that felt like. I was curious if this was going to be labeled as a VOS. I think they went a bit heavy on the VOS on the side. I mean, listen to this as compared to the more glossy front. <laughs> but if you hate that, you could take a polishing cloth and kind of take that gunk off of it. That's just what they do to make it look like a slightly older guitar that's been kept in very clean shape. So that's pretty much it for the front, except for our binding. You have five ply on the front. And of course we got our rosette around the sound hole. But besides the spruce top, it is a double A grade maple along the edges and the back. But I'd say all things considered, this is actually pretty decently figured for just being double A. But right here is where you plug the guitar in. Now you can do direct in recording to your audio interface like I do for my demos of acoustic guitars, or you can plug it into an actual amp and they'll probably sound better. But the other side is also bursted and flamed. So it looks pretty good on the edge. But then moving on to the neck, it's mainly maple. It's two pieces maple with one center seam of walnut. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And once again, you're gonna notice there's no binding on this, which is kind of interesting to be honest. It conditioned up pretty nicely, but along the edges, you just kind of get to see wood. It's kind of like a wood binding in a way, but you know, there's just no binding at all. But the Rosewood fretboard has 20 frets with your regular J200 style crown inlays. And it's just a regular 12 inch radius on here. But what kind of scale length do we have? Looks like about 25 and a half inch scale length to me, which matches our spec sheet. But what's kind of interesting here is a nylon nut. So bone saddle with a nylon nut and it measures 1.7 inches and we'll take the measurements at the 10th fret today, 2.04. With the first fret neck depth of 0.84 and by the 9th fret 0.95. It's just advertised as a slim neck profile and I would definitely agree, but it's very rounded at the same time, just not overly chunky. Here's what that neck profile looks like at the first fret and at the 10th fret. 
As far as our headstock goes, you do have the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo with the crown, but you can definitely tell that thin finish really shows on that headstock. It looks like a bunch of blemishes. I would say that right there is definitely some sort of a ding or a blemish. <laughs> more, more so than the other stuff, like I can live with some of that, but that one definitely caught my attention. But the truss rod on this one is just like the regular Gibson USA style. It's not that super fancy one like J200s normally get. And the truss rod in there is looking good, but here you can kind of see the start of that two-piece maple with a walnut center seam neck. And something else you can tell from the face of the headstock, the guitar is slightly aged. Like there is a mild yellow hue to this finish. That's what gives this that aged look. You can also see that on the binding. It's not stark white because of this slightly aged finish. But as far as other things like the nicks and dings I was talking about, there is like a small one right here. You can definitely tell that came from the factory. Another quality thing I saw was up here. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> There's like a, a small chip off of my fretboard. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Not not the best showing again for Gibson on this one. You know, some of their guitars, they're pretty good. And at the end of the day, this stuff really doesn't stand out. Like I didn't even notice that until I conditioned the fretboard. But that is something I think Gibson should uh, keep an eye out on. And maybe if it does happen, just kind of like sand it down so it's not quite as apparent. Moving on to the backside here. Again, two pieces maple. You get a little bit of figuring. It's nothing to get excited about, but it's better than nothing, I would say. <laughs> then of course, back here, you get the three ply binding. There is no heel cap on this either. Sometimes they'll bind those off with binding just to make it look a little bit fancier. But basically what they're trying to do is hide that center seam when here because you can just kind of barely tell through that dark finish that it's there. But here is pretty much the only location that you can see the two pieces maple and that walnut center stripe. And right here you can see, I'm wondering if that lines up where it rests in the case. It's kind of like scuffed it slightly, but this neck is actually pretty nice, you know, compared to what they were advertising is going to come with it. And I'll be honest, when I first felt this guitar, I did not like it. But I'll let you in on a secret, I'm actually filming this after I played it because I wanted to be able to tell you firsthand, is it actually a comfortable guitar? Yes, but you need to wear through that VOS coat first, in my opinion, because it just felt a little bit, you know, too dry. But just playing it a little bit, it did become a very comfortable guitar. So uh, if you're a Noel fan, I think you're going to like this, but I mean... The used market's just insane, and I really don't expect it to ever get better due to the limited edition nature of this guitar. So it's not one of those things you can really wait the market out on, unless, unless this video encourages a lot of people to list theirs online, and then there's like a big stockpile of these, then maybe prices would go down, but honestly, I think most people who've picked these up they're a big fan and they're going to keep them. But the serial number on this one dates to 2021. Looks like 139th day of the year and 22nd in production. Now that's just for that particular day, not the whole Noel Gallagher run. These were not numbered in any meaningful way as far as I'm aware. But we do have the Golden Gibson Deluxe Single Ring Double Lined by Cleason. As far as the neck joint, it is advertised as a compound dovetail neck to body joint with hot hide glue. The weight isn't really important on acoustic guitars, but this one weighs just a hair over five pounds. All right, let's go ahead, and plug it in and hear how this thing sounds. All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. You've got a volume control and a tone control within here. I'm going to start it all the way open, volume all the way on 10. Try moving the tone all the way down. Yeah, we'll 
try somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it doesn't sound half bad plugged in, and that's not through an acoustic amp or anything. It would sound better if you had one of those. That's just directly into my audio interface, so you can kind of color it from there if you're wishing to record with this guitar directly in. But now let's go ahead and listen to it mic'd up. Now that we know all about the Noel Gallagher J150, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it worth $42.99? The market has decided it's worth two and a half times that amount. <laughs> Do I suggest you pay that simply because of this guitar? No, definitely not. It is not a ten and a half thousand dollar guitar in feel or sound quality by any means. However, this has become an instant limited edition collectible that people are going to hold treasured for many, many years. So if you're a huge Knoll fan and you're looking for a guitar to kind of invest in and just kind of see where the market takes it, I guess this could be interesting, but this is not a guitar that you really buy to play in my opinion, because the collector's market has taken this one by the neck. It's absolutely insane. I've never seen an acoustic guitar quite go as crazy as this one as fast as this. It is a nice guitar. It sounded great, a little bit more mellow than some of the other J200s that I've had, but I kind of like that, especially for the Oasis stuff. And that thin skin finish, it, it's weird. I'm not a big fan of the way that it looks, but it does feel pretty good once you kind of get it played in a little bit, especially on that neck. So at the end of the day, would I suggest buying this as just a guitar to play? No but it is definitely a kind of a cool collector's piece. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. 
As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, TroglisGuitarShow.com. There's some links in the description. Thank you.